And the coaching company was built on these really beautiful ideas. Yeah. And they'd slowly worked away from those ideas and towards quantifying and yeah. monetizing. Mm -hmm. And they lost, and by the way, quantifying and monetizing is great, yeah. but they lost all the heart part, the whole reason that the whole idea started in the first place. Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. Welcome, 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 everyone, to another amazing episode of Referrals Podcast. Real people, real stories, real referrals. And I will tell you, I am so excited to bring you today's guest that you have no idea. You're going to learn a couple of things that are literally what's happening in today's market that is giving people the biggest success. And I have your next book. The next book you're going to, period, end of sentence, you're going to make it happen. You're going to love it. You're, it's going to be eye-opening. It's going to be tearful. It's going to be joyful. And in the end, it's going to be full of life lessons that you will want to read. But before I get to that, I need to give a huge shout out to our Summerfest participants. We're doing a 31 day Summerfest challenge because there's 31 days in July in uh, our group. And I will tell you that um, we had hundreds of people that are involved in the Summerfest challenge. It's not too late to join, by the way. You can go to summerfestchallenge.com to get involved. But Kim Spencer out of Oklahoma, one of our our dear friends says, my why when it comes to the Summerfest challenge is that sometimes life gets super busy and I get mad at myself that I didn't get it all done. Last summer, I really saw my business grow from listening to Michael, reminding me to just do it. I can always get one thing done with Michael urging and cheering me, me on. I am all in no matter what. And that's Kim Spencer, Kimmy Spencer with the red team out of Oklahoma. And uh, she is a real estate team, real estate agent, and she is one of the best in the country. And I will tell you that what is Summerfest? It's five minute video for me. I give you one strategy, you implement it, but we have a little accountability because you have to post in our group that you got it done. And that's essentially the entire Summerfest challenge in a nutshell. Speaking of challenges, Something we're going to talk about today and something that has been very big for our, not just real estate agents, lenders, financial planners, everybody that's in the generosity generation has been networking. What do we do after an event? What do we do after we meet somebody at networking? We have one-to-ones. One-to-one mastery class is kicking off with Tara right now. It literally just kicked off yesterday, but you're not too late. The first one is a lot of times it's just kind of introduction and kind of how this is going to work. So you can catch up by watching the replay and then get on her session on Friday. So one to one mastery.com with Tara Carter and myself, we're going to show you how to go from stranger, how to go from non-referral source to ambassador to referred in one meeting. You can do it. You can go from a stranger, somebody they've never met to referred by the end of the meeting. And Tara and myself are going to show you how to do that. one to one mastery.com. Speaking of referable, speaking of referred, today we have one of my favorite people on earth. I'm telling you, this is such a joy. I was telling him before that when I heard that he was today's guest, I lit up some and it, and it revitalized the energy inside of me. And it's so true. And it's going to happen to you too in the next 40 minutes. So Grant Muller is a speaker, author, certified high performance coach, and a certified referral trainer for us, and a seven-figure real estate agent. Ranked in the top 1.5% of realtors nationwide, he's on a mission to help high achievers who have tried every tool and tactic to sell more, achieve more, and find more fulfillment, but aren't quite making the progress they desire. In his new book, Top of Heart, how a new approach to business saved my life and could save yours too. Muller chronicles his 15-year journey from homelessness to a thriving real estate career, all from prioritizing real human relationships. Let's welcome back Grant Muller to Referrals Podcast. Welcome, my friend. Good to have you. Thank you, sir. What an introduction. I love 
I love hearing it from you, uh, of all people. <laughs> so. Well, what's so amazing is is like the last time we had you on was like 2021. That's way too long. We 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 have to have make you a more regular guest than than that. And you were working on the book a little bit then, and and just like all books, it, it takes some time to make it happen. But I have to show some people like what I got. I'm I, this is me. Uh, bragging a little bit. I just I just want you to know that I got this book and this is the present people. Look at the if you are on podcast and you're not seeing this, go to YouTube and check us out. But this is a very nice presentation of the book. It was just so not handwritten note, the whole nine yards and uh, what a great presentation. What a great gift. I will keep that forever. And uh, just everything you do is first class, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, I tried to slant up to the right a little bit. Um, don't always do it on all of my notes, but I have, uh, you know, blue pen, as you saw, I uh, absolutely, um, I live and die um, by handwritten cards. And, um, you know, I just love that, love that you've been a part of this book journey and you've been a part of my journey and I've learned so much from you. So the least I could do is make sure that you had your own um, copy of the book. Thank you. Well, you're, you're giving me way too much credit there and it, it's your implementation and, and yours. And, you know, you have an interesting story, right? And, and so give us a, a high level version of, of what you've gone through. And I, and I know the story, so, um, I'm just, uh, I can't wait for you to, to let people know where you've come from and how far you've come. The high level version is we moved here uh, to Denver from Cape Town, South Africa, when I was seven years old. And one of these was not like the other, you know, in second grade, uh, an accent is not cool. Maybe in middle school, if you talk funny, it's cool. But in second grade, not so much. And so uh, I was definitely out of sorts, fish out of water. I didn't even know what Sesame Street was. Mm. And uh I, I got bullied pretty relentlessly. I had a really hard time finding my way. And I learned very quickly on that if I pretended to be like the other kids, I'd fit mm -hmm. in better. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, I continued to pretend. Um, I also learned that another way I could fit in and feel better about myself was to use alcohol. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that for a little bit. And then I found the world of work and business and I fell in love and my workaholism kind of overtook my alcoholism mm -hmm. and I worked like crazy, ended up working for an internet startup. This is the late nineties. We went public, you know, Porsches and Ferraris were showing up in the parking lot, all that stuff, super rich. But I remember sitting in my really fancy condo in Denver, overlooking the skyline one night, we'd just gone public. And I thought, wow, I've, I've done it. And I hate myself. Mm. And I'm miserable and the, I, I have very few friends and I hate the work I'm doing every day. Mm. And that was the beginning of really the end for me. And uh, not six months later, um, I was introduced to some harder drugs, ended up addicted, lost my job, um, spent the rest of my money pretty quickly. And I ended up on the streets homeless and it just got worse and worse from there, as you know, and as, as you, well, you say worse and worse from there, it sounds pretty damn bad, right? I mean, it's like, you're like, well, after homelessness, it got even worse. I mean, think yeah. about that people. Yeah. Like what's he saying here? And, and you're going to have to read the book to find out the rest of how it gets worse from homelessness. And it does. And look at him now. Right. And this is the after picture. Well, I mean, like how the heck did that happen? Right. And so, uh, you know, kudos to you for for coming back from. I mean, this is literally Rocky Balboa knocked down three times, bloody on the canvas, and and getting up and and you know winning the national championship. That's it, it, essentially. It, so thank you, and I, yeah. thank you, and I appreciate that. And I'll just remind everyone that Rocky had coaches, trainers, mm -hmm. nutritionists. Um, what's her name? Um, uh, Adrian. Yeah, uh, support. Know, Yep. He had a whole Spousal support, support system, right? So none of us do it alone. I just want to share that and remind people that. That that is so true. And um that that is such a great point of that uh sometimes I almost I mean everyone needs help and uh everyone can help. You know, it, it you know, I, I what's funny is about you just said that about like I, one of the most poignant phrases that I ever heard in Rocky 
was Rocky IV when he was about to fight the Russian. He was about to leave, and um, Ivan Drago had just killed his friend Apollo Creed. By the way, and not you know not spoiler alert. It's been out for 20, 30 years. So, yeah. <laughs> but but you know he, she's at the top of the steps, and he's he's like getting ready to go, and she tearfully says, "You can't win." And, and it just like, I mean, like that, for some reason that just, mo and, and then like, he doesn't have to just prove it wrong to the world. He's got to prove it wrong to one of his biggest supporters, the person that's been wow. there forever, you know? And anyway, so I, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but it's just a very powerful moment. And by the way, he does win in the end. And then all powerful. the Russians start cheering Rocky. So think about that first. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and how did he do it? He didn't do it through logic. He didn't do it through reasoning. He didn't go to Twitter and convert the Russians to liking him more or changing their opinion. What did he, he did it. He did it by, by not, um, changing their mind, but by changing their heart. They started rooting for him at the end of the movie with Russians yell, you know, cheering, Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. And it was because he tapped into their heart, not into their mind. And that's something you've tapped into with top of heart. So what is top of heart? So in short, top of heart is the mindset, the skill set, and the heart set to build real, true, genuine human connections with people. Because in business and in sales relationships, um, you know, we, we focus too much sometimes on being in front of rather than with people. Mm. And we're taught to mm. stay relevant rather than to stay real. Mm. And it's my suggestion that, you know, that, that game is over. Putting up the business front is done. Going mm -hmm. through those motions and playing numbers games and referring to human relationships like leads or victims even. Wow. It's just not fooling anyone anymore. You know, and with AI right now, we're in the age that's brand new, right? We're in this AI world that we're in and who knows where it takes us. Yeah. But what I can tell you right now is that we know it's replacing more and more of processes and sales processes. And I believe that what we're going to have left is our human ability, at least for hopefully the next couple of years, <laughs> we're going to have our human ability to forge real heart-centered connections. Well, I think you hit it on the head with real, right? I mean, we're, we're in the first era of truly disbelieving what we're seeing. Yes. It's always been, I mean, we've always like, if somebody said something, we didn't believe it or, 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 or we could not, or we see something in text or it's in a newspaper or it's from the government or like, there's always been some element of distrust and, but we've always been able to believe video, like the video tells all, right. And it's like, somebody says, I didn't hit my wife. And then there's a video of him hitting the wife. And it's like, okay, like, I think that's pretty, but, but with today's AI world grant, there can be an AI video created where it says, hey, listen, have this person hitting a female, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we're not going to be able to, but but so what does that mean in the in the world of more artificial? And we're, we're entering a world of more artificial. Yeah. The real will stand out yeah. more. Yes. It, 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 this whole yeah. thing, referrals, real people, yeah. real stories, real referrals. It's real, real, real. And real and authentic has never been more important. And you've really touched on this with Top of Heart. I mean, it is. It's Top of Heart. It's like, look at good advertising and marketing. It's AIDA, right? Get their attention, get their interest, get their desire, and then and then get them to take action. And and what is it? That's an, it's an emotional thing. Sales is an emotional thing. Not AI isn't going to be able to elicit that emotion. It's not. It, it's only going to be right. us connecting. That's right. And... Let's take the mindset of getting real. Uh, you know, I was I was trying to do the relationship thing early in my career because I heard that relationships were, you know, real estate was a relationship business. We've heard it a million times. So I thought, okay, great. Well, then I'm going to go make a bunch of relationships. Yeah. And so I did. And I, I tried to make as many relationships as I could so I could build a big business. Right. But I wasn't present. Yeah. And I was not open. It was a very, it was a one-way, it was one-on-one -on -one broadcasting <laughs> rather, yeah. Rather than yeah. a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, totally. And it wasn't deep, right? It wasn't deep. No. It wasn't, it was, it was somewhat sincere, right? And um, very intentional, 
and and all good. So, but I think so. How is this new approach to business more relevant in the AI age, or more relevant in this marketplace than than it ever has been? In your opinion, I think our clients are getting deluged with. Is that the right word? I hope so. Deluged yeah. Yeah. with with postcards. Yeah, uh, they're hearing advertising now. You know, I have conversations with people. And I can't find the conversation when I want to pick it up again, because I don't remember if I was talking to them on thread or IG or Facebook or, in, you know, in, or on the phone or an email. I don't know where the conversation thread is anymore. Mm. And I know, speaking of AI, I think all that's going to come together and get easier one day soon, I'm sure. But mm. until then, you know, we have all these conversations. Well, those conversations are also often marketing conversations that we're getting and we're getting bombarded. I can't answer my phone anymore. The only reason I answer my phone is because I'm a realtor. Mm -hmm. I certainly would not otherwise because yeah. every other call is it's worse than it's ever been. And so we've got we're getting bombarded from all these different directions and what I believe our clients want is somebody in their corner at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. What our clients want is real actionable information, not yeah. data. We've got data everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I think this is more and more critical than ever. I also think we have an epidemic of loneliness. I don't think they say mm. smarter people say we have an epidemic of loneliness in this country. And that so followed the epidemic of COVID. Do you think with the isolationism that I that, that caused? Yeah, I think it's that. And then I think that we we feel like we have these artificial intelligence relationships, which is social media. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. It's a good yeah. start. It's good for top of mind, which is a wonderful start, but it just doesn't go far enough. And people are just yearning for more. Mm -hmm. Like you and I can have a great conversation right here. Yeah. But if we're sitting this close in real life, I get to see that little glint in your eye that's imperceptible almost. Yeah. That, that suggests to me that maybe we've hit pay dirt and yeah. maybe we've come to a place in the conversation where we can slow down and dig a little deeper yeah. where I can just hold space for you. Yeah. And so uh, I think more than ever, we're just yearning for that connection. Yeah, I, I truly believe it. You know, I'm, I'm on this thing harping, you know, the ego era is over. The ABC was always be closing. And the, the new era is the generosity generation. And, and the ABC of the generosity generation is A, always B, B, C, connecting. Always be connecting. Connect yeah. with yourself. Connect yeah. with others. And then connect others. And and I, I truly believe that uh, the consumer has gone from caged and enraged. or And there's many that are still that way or feel that way. And, and we're kind of evolving to being uncaged and allowing the freedom and uh, figuring out like what that really means now and engaged. We're looking to be engaged. People want to be invited to a one-to-one. -one. People want to be invited to events. People want to engage. They really do, but they haven't been invited by someone sincere who sincerely wants them. I have to say of all the things I've learned from you, and there are many, um, the concept around simply offering invitations, yeah. putting invitations out <laughs> rather than promotions out yeah. has, has been a huge change in my business, but not just my business, my life, because it's true. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I love nothing more than to simply say, Hey, Michael, I was just thinking of you. We should go grab coffee sometime. Yeah. Or we should do a yeah. podcast sometime. It's all we do for life. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> like today. Yeah. And, and 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 that that's the other thing, right? Well, and of course you love the invitation versus flyers and brochures, right? Because you it it in invitation, what you know, invite. Where does the root of invite come from? It comes from in vitals and your vitals, like take your vital signs. Where mm -hmm. where's that originate? In your heart, right? Mm -hmm. So in heart, mm -hmm. in life, actually. So invite means come in to my life, right? Into my heart. Oh, beautiful. And it's beautiful. very emotional. It's it's more heartfelt than it is uh, logical in some cases, right? So of course you love that. It's aligned yeah, with cool. your in, your entire philosophy of top of heart, which is yeah. uh, brilliant and beautiful. So, all right. So um, you, you said earlier that it took coaches and mentors and um, and support right? For, for Rocky to prevail. 
And the same with you. So like, what does that look like? You've, you've already like mentioned me and we don't need to, I don't think we need to belabor that. I appreciate that very much, but, but like, like, what did that look like as you were coming, were coming out? And what I hope that you inspire is that person that's listening and, um, the who is not them. Like the who is not you is something I say all the time. Like, like get help, like get help to go to the next level. Yes. And so who were some people that helped you and how did they help you along the way? I'll give you a few quick examples. One, number one is, uh, you know, my family helped save my life. I was really lucky that when I raised my hand, I was missing. They couldn't find me. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even connect with them because I was with so many dangerous people that I knew they could be used as leverage. Mm. So they weren't even in my phone. And uh, they, you know, they've been looking for me for many, many years. And when I finally reached out and said, I need help, luckily I got it from them. So that's number one. Mm. Number two in recovery, I have a sponsor who's helped me go through the 12 steps. And I've been working with the same sponsor uh, for 15 years now. And um, so that's been an incredible journey. And then of course, um, um, The next step is I sponsor others and I just need to be one step ahead to do that. So I want to share with your audience, you know, if there's something that you know that works well for you, share it with the other agent, share it Mm -hmm. with the other person. Uh, And then I'll give another example. I, you know, I read the book Endless Referrals and then The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. And um, that one's also written by John David Mann. And I love the five laws. And similar to your book, I read them and said, oh, yeah, those are great. And I went out and didn't really implement or really, really live into those concepts. But then when I came back to them again, I I dug deeper and I read The Go-Giver again. And I I really made some big changes in my business. And I saw that Bob was teaching um, a course and I went to Florida and I learned. And then he was teaching another one and I went to Florida and I learned. And similar to my process with you, I exposed myself in person Mm-hmm. to those concepts. And every time one of you mentions someone else, um, you know, Bob mentions Randy Gage a lot when he talks about prosperity and money mindset. So I thought, who's this Randy Gage person? So then I dug a little deeper. And Randy Gage also wrote a little endorsement for the book, which is cool. So things, it's amazing how things change. Yeah. Uh, but you guys have become mentors and friends for me and colleagues in some ways. Yeah. And so, uh, I think, and I could go on and on. At any given time, I have four or five coaches, whether it's in nutrition or working out, riding That's right. horses. That's right. um, I have a speaker coach. I have a coaching coach. I have like three coaching coaches. Um, and I have a lot of different coaches at any given time uh, because I want to. I want to go faster. Frankly, yeah. I have big ambitions, and yeah. uh, I I don't know what I don't know. Yeah, powerful. And and it's interesting you brought up Bob Berg because and this this is gonna tie to our, our next subject where I have a bone to pick with you about the beginning of Top of Heart. And so here's what's interesting. So I, I'm doing one to ones in Kansas City, and there was a gal by the name of Joyce Lehman who was referred to me that I needed to meet with. And that's how it works in networking is you know, somebody says you, you need to meet this person. She's up and rising, you know, superstar speaker. And that kind of thing. So I I met with met with Joyce, and she had someone that she wanted to introduce me to, and um, so I said, all right, well that'd be great. Just have her show up an hour after we've met. So so Joyce and I met, and I do what I do. I, I all the questions were about her. I really wanted to find out more about her and that kind of thing. And then uh, Christy sat down. Christy Dryling is is her name, and um, so in, we kind of we kind of tweak the stack. Usually a stack is like three or four one-to-ones and it's completely one-to-one. I also kind of change that sometimes where it would be an accumulative, right? It started out one-to-one, one-to-two, then it was one-to-three. And then by the end, it was, it was five of us sitting around and and maybe having happy hour. Well, that's kind of what happened here is that the three of us uh, started happy hour a little bit and just started chatting. And I was, um, somebody brought up Bob Berg and Joyce goes, oh, Bob Berg. Very cool. Like, and I'm like, oh my God, like I love his book, Endless Referrals. I'm all about referrals and that kind of thing. Well, I had just like, I had just, I think, given quite a bit of value in the conversation with Joyce, realized I just met her. Well, she calls Bob Burke. So, 
she's and it's like, hey, Joyce is like, hey, I've got somebody here you want to meet. And, and you know, like he didn't know me from Adam, right? I mean, like, hey, Michael, you know. And so we, we chatted a little bit. Well, you know, this is how it works is so they started talking. Well, they started talking about my mentor, Zig Ziglar. And so we, we had to, and, and, and Bob says, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm doing an event in Florida and Zig is going to be there with, with, um, his son and, or his son and, and wife. And that's TRH, the redhead for those keeping score at home for the Zig Ziglar fans. Well, okay. So we taught, and it's like right then the three of us, of us decided we're going to his event in Florida right wow. then. Right. Wow. And it's yeah. like, I didn't know how I was going to make it happen, right? This is early in my career, and I was basically, you know, uh, not broke, but, but like, not as financially successful as later. So, but we went down there, got a chance to meet him, and then, you know, sadly, this is after Zig had fallen. Um, he, he, he slipped on some ice and hit his head, uh, was never the same, unfortunately, um, and, and so Tom was up there and, and Zig would, would say his wisdom or whatever. Sometimes he'd repeat some things and that kind of thing. But then Bob did his Zig Ziglar impression, yeah, which yeah. was Famous. like, had the place <laughs> rolling, um, got a chance to, to meet and chat with Bob there and Tom Scott and John David Mann. And, um, you know, over time built that relationship. And, and then I'm driving through Florida a year later and I'm like, oh my gosh, we're pretty close to Bob. And I just texted, I said, hey, Bob, you want to grab a cup of coffee? Like it's one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm you know, like, there's no way he says yes to that. He says, yes, we have a one-to-one -one in Dunkin' Donuts. I know that's a surprise to he absolutely loves, no one here. Uh, but those of you listening, too. he's yeah. a huge Dunkin' Donuts fan. And, and I was smart enough to say we could meet at a Dunkin' Donuts. So <laughs> knowing that helped. So we met and chatted. And, and here's the thing, Grant, and, and you know this too, is, is so sometimes, sometimes when we meet these authors, I mean, and, and I hope everybody takes this the right way, is in many cases, they're not who we think they're going to be. That's right. I'll just put it no, that way, right? Fair. Yeah. Fair. With Bo Bob is the freaking go-giver. Yes. Like Bob, Bob represented everything that you would expect from the go-giver and beyond. We had a great conversation and and got a chance to connect a little bit. We only had like 30, 45 minutes. Um, but but you know, flash forward, John David Mann just had me endorse his book. Um, and um, we've had John David Mann on, we've had Bob Berg on twice, and and um, and then it leads us to to Grant Muller, who, you know, Bob and I talked about Grant and just how awesome Grant and what where and this is before your book was this is 2020, 2021, and that and where it was heading, right? And it's just, it's one of those where um, all started because of one-to-one -one and being open to opportunities. So that leads me to top of heart. And in the, in the, so Grant asked me to read it, to endorse it. I, I will tell everybody here, if you've ever seen my endorsement on a book, I've read the book. And, and there are books that I have turned down endorsing because they, they um, explain maybe some strategies that doesn't align with, with me and, and what I teach. Well, so I opened the book and the very first chapter, <laughs> the very, the very first chapter Here it comes. talks, talks, <laughs> talks about basically it was a networking stack gone bad. It, it, it was, it was, uh, it was yes. an awkward, it, it, it literally had to be one of the first times that Grant had ever implemented the, the networking yeah. stack. And it just, and listen, it, you know, like any strategy, we're going to fail at it first, you know, and it didn't go well. And, um, it was, and I was just like, I was, I wrote and I read the rest of the story. I'm just like, I'm in awe. This is awesome. And I, I, I of course endorsed it. And but then, I got to tell I, you. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, Hey, something that kind of, kind of like I saw and, you know, is <laughs> like in the first chapter, like, uh, you know, I teach the networking stack a lot and this might scare people away from doing the networking stack. No. Yeah, no, it's, 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 a. Uh... It's how it's it's the it's a wonderful example of how you can take a brilliant strategy and it really is brilliant. I remember reading it for the very first time in seven levels and thinking, I mean, light bulb 
fireworks, not mm. slight bulbs. Taking a brilliant strategy and applying the wrong motivation and the wrong heart to it, mm. um, that's what that was about. So again, it was about how do I meet with as many people as possible yeah. to get what I want yeah. as yeah. fast yeah. as possible. Mm. And um, yeah, I had, and I don't go all over it in the book, but I mean, there were, it, it was bad, you know, I mean, it was really bad. And um, I'm actually just remembering right now that I need to tell, I haven't told uh, the attorney in, in one part of that book um, that she's in the book. I need to remember to do that, mm -hmm. uh, get her a copy, but but yeah, it's a brilliant strategy. It was wor It was built around, it was almost like, how do you take something and use it for evil? And I wasn't trying yeah. to use it for evil, yeah. right? Yeah, but Strategy, strategies and tools can be used just for a tool. good or bad, right? It's just yeah. a tool. At yeah. the end of the day, it's a tool. Yeah. And we can use a hammer to do good things and bad things. That's right, that's right. Build and destruct. That's and right. so, uh, you know, and I didn't have evil intentions. However, I had very me-focused intentions. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah so, so my business, I was with, more people than you could imagine every week. Yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. I had 60 live phone conversations live every single week. Mm -hmm. I went to five, at least five meals every week, two events every week. Mm -hmm. And my business went down. Mm. Why because, do you think that was? Because I was running through the numbers. Yeah, I was checking people off. Yeah, I was writing down names on my tracker. I'm not going to tell you the name of the tracker because it'll give away the coaching company that I was a part of at that time. Yeah. Um, but, it, and it was actually, and the coaching company was built on these really beautiful ideas. Yeah. And they'd slowly worked away from those ideas and towards quantifying and yeah. monetizing. Mm -hmm. And they, and by the way, quantifying and monetizing is great, yeah. but they lost all the heart part, the whole reason that the whole idea started in the first place. Mm. And so when I slowed down, and just started spending time with people, just hanging out with people. It was so much easier. And by the way, I'm an introvert. So I had to learn, like, how do you hang out with people? I don't mm. know how to do that. It's not a natural thing for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I go to a networking, let's talk about networking for a second. You've mentioned how strong and powerful that is right now. And, you know, I share with my coaching clients, find the way to do the networking event that works for who you are. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I you know, it, it tends to be most successful if I connect with the people that are on the periphery of the room. Mm -hmm. And I usually I'll hang up in the corner with another weirdo. Me. Me. <laughs> and it would be me come, and you yeah. standing in the corner. I mean, yeah. But some yeah. of my <laughs> strongest relationships have begun that way. And nowadays, by the way, if you do that enough times. When you walk into the room, people come to you yeah, that's because right. now you've got several, right? So it's yeah. what builds. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not, I, and I've always, I've always been jealous of those agents who have never met a stranger. They walk yeah. into a room and they light it up. That's just not who I am. And that's, that's not, okay. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're both wearing dark colors right now. Yeah. We're, we're both heavily introvert. We're both authors and you'll find that a lot of authors are, yes. are more introverted. Yeah. Um, and it, you're exactly right. That that's why I had the seven steps of connecting with connectors. Right? Is it yeah. is it? It was I had control of the process. Right? As long as I could control the process, introvert. Right? Is yeah. if I can control the process and how I meet. If 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 it's random, I am I am I am might as well call me dizzy. You know, you yeah. might as well I might yeah. as well have vertigo because yeah. it's it's going to be that nauseous for me to do that. Yes. Versus if I have a plan and it's surgical then, then, you know, I can go from there. I'm great once, like, I'm great like this, like I'm yeah. great once, yeah. you know, I'm in the one-to-one -one, uh, yeah. because I am genuinely curious and, and but it, it's getting there. That is sometimes the, the shakiest proposition. And, and that, you know, that I had to create a system and that's, I, I'll tell you, Grant, maybe you can relate to this too, is, is I thank God every day for real estate, because if I had not gotten into sales, the, the number of great people who I have met in life would would have been seriously jeopardized. I, I have been forced to meet so many great people in real estate in my life that that if I had been a teacher and a coach, 
and 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 that's all I had done, then then what I, maybe I had a similar impact, but but I don't know if others would have had as much impact on me in my life to make me better, right? If that makes sense. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm just so forced. I've been it's forced, so, and then I love it, right? I hate to. It's, it's like the gym. Forced, it's also forced personal development. That's right. And, right. uh, you know, and, and I, as personal development is business development. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, so I think that that's the case too. I went to a coaching retreat once and I didn't have enough money. So I had to uh, double up on the room. I shared a room with this guy who was, uh, and I didn't realize I was an introvert until I met this guy. But he was, <laughs> he, was, an he was not an introvert. Yeah. He was an extrovert. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, you know, at the end of those things, at the end of the day, I go home to the room, I hold myself and I cry. Right. Yeah. But yeah. He just, he just built and built and built energy. But I went out with him one night with, with all the other people from this coaching group. And the things I learned in dinner in the first 15 minutes were way more than I learned the whole three mm. days that we've been at this event. Mm. So I think that I learned really how we have people have the answers that we need. Yeah. We'll have the inspiration yeah. we need, the love we need, and we have it for them. Yeah. And so when we just allow ourselves to connect, it's so powerful. And by the way, so now I always do that. But I also, you know, I was at a conference in Boise. I spoke at the conference. It was great. Um, so I was very, you know, very with people and we went to a, a big dinner and all this great stuff. But then I made sure to schedule the next night. I went, I got in an Uber and I went to a 12 step meeting by myself and it was beautiful. So I yeah. think just knowing how to balance and knowing who we are is, is so yeah. important. Yeah, that that's powerful. And how do you handle that, Michael? Same way, right? I, yeah. I have to balance the retreating with the engagement and, and yeah. um, definitely. And, and I, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting because I typically, I get energy by retreating, you know, I'm like a battery. I've got to go recharge. Some people yeah. are yeah. a battery in the way that if they go to people, the, the being with the people will recharge their battery. Um, and that was really bad in 2020. It was horrible for the extroverts for us introverts. We're like, we've been training for this baby. Like, <laughs> like you mean I can't go out? Like, let's go, you know? So, so that was, uh, but but I, I think that's the, the I think the other thing too is is the managing of the of the you know knowing it's kind of like the gym and I was saying that earlier is just like like I don't necessarily like to go but I'm glad I went conferences are the same way I yeah. I don't exactly like to go but I'm always glad I went uh, it, you know it in every case events it's like I'm not sure like I'll do I'll do any it takes me three hours to get there and three minutes to get back. Right. That's yeah. how my gym is. It takes me three hours to get to the gym. It takes me three <laughs> minutes. To, it's actually like it's less than three minutes from here, but it yeah. takes me three hours to go. Yeah. But it, it's three minutes to get back. You know, <laughs> it, it's like that with events. It's like that with conferences. But I'm always glad I went. And I and I think most people actually kind of have a similar you know, experience with that is they're like, I don't know. I don't know. And then they go and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I went. I got like your Idaho experience, you know? All yeah, right. So I, use that, I use that gym analogy all the time as well, because I've literally never walked out of the gym and said, Oh, I wish I hadn't done that today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I very rarely said, you know, but the more you go, the more, the more, and it's the same with um, handwritten cards. Yeah. Um, or every month I sit down and write out the next month's birthday cards. Yeah. And I honestly, I, I never look forward to it, but by the end of it, by reaching out to people and letting them know how much I care about them and appreciate them, it, it just, it does so, so much for me. So that's yeah, a pearl for know. everybody to write down too, is that you're, you know, you, you know, it, this is, this is July and maybe, you know, you find out your August birthdays and you get all your birthday cards ready for the next month and the, in the next couple of weeks, I think that's brilliant and proactive and, yeah. Um, then you kind of, and here's the thing, if you do it, you, you kind of remember the days as well. Like even, even though you don't think you do, but when it says like August 8th and you're like, oh, that's eight, eight, you know, and then you're like, you see Jack Roulette and you're like, you know, Hey, wait, today's eight, eight is today your birthday. And they're like, oh my God, how did you remember that? You know? And yeah. it's like, well, I didn't remember it all year. 
until yeah. July 16th when I was <laughs> yeah. writing the birthday cards out for the next month. That's right. But you do. It, 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 yeah. and, or you, you, you kind of remember the order, or at least I do. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I know that one's early, like the first week, second week, third week, fourth week. And yeah. it's like, didn't you have a birthday this week? And they're like, oh, my gosh, like, totally. Yeah. I love yeah. that. All right. So, so. How do you take the top of heart approach and and coach people on it? Like, tell us about your approach in coaching. So there are three there are three pieces again: mindset, skill set, heart set. So mindset, we dive into authenticity. We dive into showing up uh, with presence. Hmm. We talk about being open and helpful, and we really look at how to show how we want to show up in the moments hmm. with the people that we're with. And I say people that we're with, not clients, not leads, because yeah. it's everybody. Yeah. And I don't make a differentiation. So um, I'll, so that's mindset. And we spend a lot of time in mindset. The second piece is skill set, though, because let's face it, you can be great with people and have a great mindset. But if you don't have a culture of excellence, if you don't have the strength, whether it's the emotional strength required in any business, if you don't have the personal impact, uh, you're going to have a tough time making it in business. So we also have to do the skill set. And uh, in the skill set, the thing that I couldn't, the nut I couldn't crack for the longest time while I was coaching other agents is I'd share those tools that we were talking about. Yeah. I'd share the mindset and people would go out and try it for a little bit and then not sustain. Mm. So that's where the high performance coaching really has been a big piece of my coaching business. So we go through and, and talk about the high performance habits of the world's highest performers. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure we build in the personal development so that you're going out and consistently executing on it. And we also want to talk about the excellence in business. Uh, frankly, I don't do a ton of tactical stuff around real estate specifically. Yeah. We have real estate coaching. But we don't talk about how to get deals done. We yeah. talk about how to get deals. Yeah. And the third piece, though, is the heart set. And so you can have a great mindset. You can have all the skills in the world. But just like that networking stack that didn't work, if you don't show up um, with some intention, it's not going to happen. So mm. to give you a real quick example, um, I, I learned that in these one-on-ones, what was happening is I'd show up at the one-on-one, slam my car into park, you know, have an argument on the phone on the way with some other agent about an inspection, run into the restaurant. And sometimes I'm looking at the calendar on my phone going, who am I about to meet with? Oh, hey, Michael, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And that interaction doesn't, doesn't go so well. Yeah. But when I pull my car into park, every time I pull my car into park, it reminds me to take a snapshot. And the snapshot is, who am I going to walk? Who am I going to see next? Yeah. And actually, my horse taught me this. <laughs> Horses are very, very sensitive. They can feel your heartbeat. Mm. And uh, I would sometimes pull into the parking lot to go ride my horse, mm. bringing all that energy from work, mm -hmm. get on my horse, who's very sensitive, and he'd kind of freak out. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to put my car in park and think about who I'm about to meet with. And then I set an intention, not for how am I going to get them to list with me? How am I going to get them to refer to me? The intention is, how do I want them to feel? Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to remember that real estate isn't always a happy transition for everyone. Mm -hmm. And by the way, half the time in lunches, we're not even talking about real estate, That's but right. the conversation could be positive or negative. So if I know that you were just got engaged and I saw it on social media two weeks ago and we're having lunch to celebrate it, then in my snapshot, I think about you, I think about your fiance and I'm ready to party. Yeah. I come in with enthusiasm and excitement yeah. because I'm you know truly, truly excited for you. Yeah. But if I know that somebody in your life died, you had a big loss of some kind. Then I might come in, and again, I'm not going to make assumptions. So I don't come in and say, oh, how are you doing? You must be just really struggling. Mm -hmm. But I will come in curious. Mm -hmm. I will come in, and you used that word earlier. I will come in, and I'll see, how do you want to lead the conversation? Do you want to lead with that? Or maybe what you need at lunch is to talk about anything but that. That's right. But I'm going to create the space for you to kind of lead the way in that lunch. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to create the space if you need it 
to cry, to make jokes, to do whatever you need to do in the moment to grieve. And so heart set is all about being intentional about how we want other people to feel. And then what we do is we, we, we become aligned. And so now it's not you and I sitting across the table from lunch, but it's you and I looking in the same direction. And speaking of that, at lunch one-on-one, if there are four seats, there are two of us, I'm sitting right next to you, baby. Yeah. You know, not in a weird way, Yeah. but I'm just sitting next to you so that we can look in the same direction, right? Yeah. Um, because that's how we want to see the world together. And when you do that, then instead of having someone that refers to you when asked, mm-hmm. you have a raving referrer on your hands yeah. who says, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Did you just say you're moving? I know you didn't ask, but if you don't use Grant, we're not talking again. You get yeah. that kind of referral. Yeah. Yeah. That comes I, from heart set. Yeah, I love that. Mindset, skill set, and heart set. And Zig Ziglar always had a phrase that uh, really relates to what you're saying. And that's, that's meet them where they are, you know, and, and that was a huge thing for me because I always came in like a ball of fire. You know, I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to energize anything. Well, I came in too high too often, you know? And, (laughs) and like you said, it's, 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 you need to, you know, you need to, to kind of figure out the tone to begin with and figure out where they are and meet them where they are and then and then build from there show up in, and understand like you know how do you want them to feel when when it's all finished and visualization um this kind of goes back to morning rituals i know that i've implemented this with the visualization is is i i visualize through the day and my appointments and i i visualize how how do i want them in the end like do i want them laughing do i want them peaceful do i want them yeah. um you know smiling do i want them to, to to know they're loved which is a very common one for me um you know and and uh i, I it all ties back together in a beautiful way and um i mean grant thanks for for putting out this book so that uh you're changing lives you're you're going i mean the stories you're going to hear and i'm sure you've already heard before i i i even go to the close how does someone get top of heart? How do how do we get the book? What what's what's the next step to connect with you and and to connect with this book? Thanks for asking. So you can buy the book at topofheart.com. Made it super simple. And that'll take you right to the Amazon page. The ebook will be only 99 cents on Monday and Tuesday only. Okay. And the print's available on Tuesday. Uh, so, so this is literally today up. then. So we're talking, yes, correct. Today. Yeah. So yeah, today guess, yeah. is the last day of the sale. So make it a, yeah. this is topofheart.com. No S, right? It's topofheart.com. And, it. or they can go to Amazon and yes. get the ebook or the, what was the other type? Uh, the print, print and hardback. Print. So soft cover and hardcover available today. I've been saying Tuesday for so yeah. long, but Tuesday, yeah. if you say it long enough, becomes today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That what well, is today? So very exciting. Well, well, here's the thing. Everybody needs to go out and get it. I, I, you know, I hope you sell thousands upon thousands of books today. And and uh, just thank you so much for being here once again as our guest. We've got to make it an annual thing, and and just keep doing what you do, and and keep inspiring people and changing lives, and and just know how much that I appreciate you, and and how much we appreciate you here, and uh, just uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, sir. And you and Sherry mean the world to me. So thank you very much. Appreciate you. Well, thank you. And and ladies and gentlemen, make it happen. I took I took two and a half pages of notes and and like I've read the book and I and I know this gentleman super well. And I uh literally could not quit writing notes. Each one, teach one, meet them where they are, give massive value first, show up. Uh, you know, um, just, you know, are you in front of people? Are you putting up a front or are you truly connecting? And, um, you know, who his support staff or support were was family, sponsor. He became a sponsor, each one, teach one. And um, just so many great things here, the things that he learned from others, the, the the way that he evolved through the networking one-to-ones and the first evolution he had to make was be in the right mindset, the mindset and the spirit of helpfulness and generosity and um, how it's all really about fulfillment in the end. And he really tried to fit in and he did bad stuff to try to fit in. And now in his life, he truly understands it's not about fitting in. It's about standing out. 
and you can truly stand out. And you're going to find that once you stand out, there's a lot of outstanding people out there on the peripheral. They're a little weird. As he said, it's me and him at the networking event on the periphery. And guess what, people? You too can do it. Get the book, Top of Heart. And also, before I let you go, dear God, please check out one to one mastery.com. Networking is on fire right now. People are getting more referrals from networking partners than any time before. People are uncaged and willing to engage. They're looking to build referral partnerships. One to one mastery.com. That's one, the number one, T O one, the number one, mastery.com with Tara Carter and myself started yesterday, but you can catch up very easily. I hope you join us with that. Bottom line is, man, what a great podcast. This is one you're going to listen to over and over again. I hope you were inspired as much as I was, and we'll see you next time on Referrals Podcast. Have a great one.